All right, hi everyone. You can see I'm kind of getting my crystals on. Uh, although I, I've been, you know, given all the ones that I now have to pull from, I've been pretty selective. Uh, but I do approach any of my readings with the Mary L uh, with respect and with an intention to really, you know, go deep as this title may represent, uh, because that's what I keep thinking is dig deep, dive deep, go deep. Um, so what I'm talking about is an Instagram challenge that I'm doing or, or hosting or trying to motivate people to do, I suppose, with uh, Patrick from In the 78 Cards. I'll put a link to his channel in the description box below. Uh, he's made some fantastic um, fancy videos, because he's all fancy video maker, as well as he did one uh, where he was talking uh, through. So I will put links to those below. Um, but basically, it's just taking a month. Uh, back in October, I had, uh, before October, I had received from a client a beautiful uh, Raven's Prophecy Tarot. And um, it was right, it must have been right around uh, the beginning of October. So I went through, there was a challenge for October, and I used the uh, Raven's Prophecy Tarot all month long. And I really, by the end of that month, felt very strongly connected to that particular deck. And so uh, when I did my long two-part walkthrough of the Mary Altero, um, quite a few people got on board with this deck, understandably so, because I think it just takes a look at these cards to know whether it's something you want to work with or not. And, and Patrick was definitely one who was like, I'm going to have to have those. Um, I was uh, Skyping him and his wife was there as well. And she was, you know, nearby. And I kept um, trying to talk her into letting him have the stack. <laughs> I begged her, I said, he needs it. He needs it. And she was like, I think ready to shoot both of us. Um, but apparently she let him buy it. So... Anyways, he became quite obsessed with it, and so then he got it, and he uh, literally, like, you guys see me get hyped up on energy and things like that, so and over decks a lot. Uh, he pretty much matched that. I, he was, like, ramped up on Marielle energy. <laughs> He's like, we need to do a, a, a we need to do a, a challenge, we need to read a challenge. I'm like, I'm doing a challenge. I'm doing letter march. <laughs> so he's like, We're, well, let's do it for, I said, let's do it for Instagram. We can do a draw. So that's what we're doing. And um, I have all my power things here. Um, I just received this in the mail today. This is in, uh, I'm thinking it's an obsidian stone. I need to ask her. Uh, but uh, pendulum, and that is kind of A because this is what I, I have intended to have actually sitting on my Mary L. Uh, but, so that's appropriate that it be here as well as if you're going to have one here, then look at you have the white and the black towers um, from Tarot. <laughs> and here is my Hedenbergite. I probably maybe have said that right for once because I have it written down in my book. A uh, piece of tourmaline. A piece of... Um, my first piece of labradorite. I have a whole beautiful pile over there that literally I walk by and it electrocutes me. Um, uh, and my shungite over here. And then this bad boy. Now this one spent a lot of time on my Mary L. And I'm not entirely sure if it's willing to give up its place of honor yet. Uh, this still kind of feels right. I haven't decided yet because I just received that. But either way, it looks amazing and it's appropriate. And this really is ready to work. This one is my has become one of the t power four. He's a very bossy crystal, and seriously, when I hold this, I feel like I have a force field on me, and so I, I'm holding it a lot during readings. Um, I hold this one as well a lot during readings, uh, or it will be sitting in my lap a lot of times. So anyways, that's just the random talk about uh, how I guess I'm approaching this particular challenge. Now, what we're doing, the reason that it's the hashtag for this is within, without, and advice, is that in the Marielle guidebook at the end where the, um, 
spreads are, she suggests a daily reading spread and to have it in the morning. Now she goes through some, you know, shuffle seven times, do this, do that. I just shuffle it the way you want. Um, I don't do any of this kind of stuff. I, For me, shuffling is very much part of getting into the moment and I really wouldn't do it in some random, you know, some way that somebody had said to do. <laughs> um, I would do however it is, however that you shuffle cards um, and so that it connects you into how, you, you know, you're going to move forward. Um, and, and go into re go into reading mode, right? That's what shuffling does, as well as mixing the cards up. It's kind of shorthanding you into that space, and so you need to do what you know shorthands you best, <laughs> so to speak. So then what you do is you have, now and she says in the morning, it really doesn't have to be in the morning. I tend to do draws um, at the night before or at the end of the night. You can still do this. What was going on? Like what is the stuff that you need to process internally about what went on during the day? What um, do you need to process about the kind of external craziness of the day? And what is some advice um, to, to maybe move you into the next day. So if you did it at night, you just modify that. And Patrick did say in his video uh, that this is all about modification. You can pull one card if you want to pull one card. Um, you know, you don't have to even pull three cards. Um, we're just kind of going off of this because it was particularly in her... Um, book for a daily spread and so our intention was to kind of focus on the Marielle. A lot of people are doing the Marielle but you don't even have to do the Marielle. Uh, we're suggesting that you can use a deck that is your kind of dig deep deck uh, because when I'm working with this particular deck um, I feel as if you're diving into the waters of the high priestess. That's what it feels like to me. <clears throat> and so when we were talking about that's kind of how we got the dive deep kind of came up um, and then we kind of kind of shifted around from there. That's what it feels like. So you want one of those decks that are really going to go deep. Somebody talked about using the Heindel Tarot, which is fantastic for this kind of work. Uh, somebody talked about using the Tarot of the Hidden Realms. Again, that's all about the internal seat of your power. It's a beautiful deck to use for that. Um, any tarot deck is purpose is to dive deep, right? Um, but you know, this is kind of what's your deck that is like that power deck for you and or what is a new deck that you really want to sink into and get to know by the end of the month. Some people are splitting it in half and doing two weeks of this and two weeks of that. Some people may be doing different ones every time. This is not about, you know, getting too stressed over particulars. We're just happy to see people's, uh, you know, daily draws and to see what comes up um, to either help you. I'm, I am going to try doing it at the beginning of the day. I don't normally do uh, early morning or like first in the morning. I'm not an early morning person, but I don't usually do uh, draws in the morning for myself, but I might start it, but I might very well uh, shift to doing it at night. Um, if I do it at night, I may even shift the card positions. Uh, usually when I do something at night, I do something similar to my full moon readings where I say, what do I need to release from today? What do I need to hold on to for about today or incorporate about today and what energy do I need to, to think about as I move into the next day. So, you know, it's all flexible. Do whatever you want. The whole point is, is to do a draw a day or do a draw a week or do a draw whenever you feel like it and hashtag uh, within without advice. <laughs> it's just, you know, fun ways to see what other people are doing and to get in and start a conversation about, you know, a particular deck or about whatever deck somebody might be using on that. And we get to have conversations on it. There's some people who are newer uh, to tarot and they're like, oh, we don't know. It's a way for us to have a conversation with them um, about this, uh, about what they might have pulled up and they can, yeah, I don't know what this means. And there'll be people that can say, okay, let's take a look at this. You know, it's really about building community and getting in and working on something together. So be that as it may, let's stick this over here. Close that up. Get out my lovely cards. And let's just see. Let's go ahead and do... Um, now, th today, right now, it is 5.30, so it is not early on in the day by any means. 
but I still have lots of work to go and you all know I stay up quite late so I still have quite a large chunk of the day left. So we're just going to go ahead and do this um, as if I had pulled this right when I woke up in the morning, which wasn't going to happen today because I fell out of bed and had to run as about to the groomers within like a half an hour. So they saw me looking pretty scary. One thing I do need to get, because I'm starting to hunch funny over my table, because I have this box, which I quite love, that I put stones into, but the problem is they rattle around in there. And so I need to... Um, I need to put some felt down at the bottom of that uh, because it quite bothers me when I'm doing readings, number one, and number two. So then I'm kind of trying not to touch the table and it's throwing my shuffling off. So maybe the Marielle's going to talk to me about that, saying, no, you're not allowed to go near Joanne's or Michael's where there's felt because you're going to come out with 20 other things. <laughs> Okay, so what you're going to do is shuffle however you're going to shuffle, split however you split. I tend to focus and kind of bam out a split. These split very nicely, can I just say. Now the other thing that sometimes, and I'll show you this, because the other thing, so what I generally would do is then just draw from the top of the deck like that, right? The other thing that you can do, let me just get some fresh cards here. The other thing I'll do is I'll take the middle where the split was and I will put that in the middle. I will take the bottom card and put it here and then I'll take the very top card and put it here. I quite like that one when it's like sequentially kind of things. Um, it's But I don't have like a set when I do it. I just do whatever feels right. Um, So there you have it. There's, I mean, there's all kinds of ways to split and pull cards and pick cards. And like I said, uh, generally you're going to find what works for you. Uh, and you're going to go with that and not really worry about right ways or wrong ways. It's just about you getting into um, and connecting with uh, that sense of self going or higher self or you, whoever it is that you connect to when you do readings. And that's all. And to get the cards mixed up, obviously. <laughs> so let's go. Split. See, right now, I just felt a really strong zing on this card right here. There it is. When I touch it, this happens a lot. A lot of times when I take a split, it's this top card, but it's not always. So for me, when this one shows up, I go with it. That becomes my middle card right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the bottom and, and do this just like this. So it's really just about kind of getting in touch with the cards and figuring out what it is that works with you. Now let me zoom these in here so that you can see them. So here we have uh, the Knight of Wands, we have the Empress, and we have the Three of Cups. So the first position is within. This is about what's going on internally. Let's just read real quick what it is she's talking about here. It says, this is what's going on inside of you today, your thoughts, feelings, desires. This card will generally show your overall internal experience of the day with particular attention to any especially good or sore or good spots. So uh, this makes sense to me because I'm feeling very energetic. This is the Wands card. This is the Knight of Wands, which is about movement. Uh, and I have not had much sleep either, but I'm really zinged up from uh, readings that I've been doing, uh, being surrounded by crystals. I was sent, I had a mail, big mail package that I opened today, which will eventually be go, probably going up tomorrow. Um, 
and that had a crystal book in it. So I've been looking at my crystals. So I have like a lot of crystal things. I've been doing my bullet journaling, compiling my, so I feel quite energetic um, right now and creatively energetic. So that's not surprising to me. Now for me with the Marielle and the same thing I did this also with the, um, I kind of look at it first and kind of get those intuitive hits. Like, okay, this makes sense to me. Nights are about movement, wands are about creative creativity. It's the energy. I love the lightning bolt that's in the palm of his hand. Um, this I don't even know what kind of creature this is. I'm guessing it's a black wolf. But then he also has kind of hand fingers. So he is like partially human. So maybe a type of a, a werewolf, which would be very cool for me. Uh, I have not read all of the miners as of yet. Uh, so I'll just think about But But you, just right there, we know night movement wand we know the energy of the wands and we get that idea of the lightning book we have this power banking in his eyes but he's not just staying in his eyes he's doing something with it there's movement being caused with it so that's what i'm seeing you know first so i'll kind of look at that and say and that resonates with me i thought okay yeah that that does feel like about what today is about and then i will go and peek at what uh, she wrote about uh, because I am trying to learn to this deck and get to know it. But I, I really strongly suggest that you get your own hits first. Think about it. Sit with it. Talk to yourself about it. Um, and get that kind of energy first. So this is the Knight of Wands. Uh, and it, she calls it the Dark Knight. It was supposed to have been a Black Panther, she noted. Uh, but as she, um, as she was painting, it became more and more ambiguous as to what he was. Was he a wolf? Was he a rat? Was he a bear? A panther, a man. He's the power of transformation and transmutation, she talks about. Um, his darkness is polar to the other knights, all of which contain some sort of feline. Uh, so the spirit, a white tiger in the night of disc, the lion sun mask in the night of swords, and the solar lion cherubim in the arm armor of the knight of cups. So you have that sense where he is the dark one, the dark vacuum of the Knight of Wands. He searches for light, power, energy, and absorbs them. So he's absorbing energy in, and that's what's causing his eyes to glow. So it's the search for power and energy, the holy flame. Um, it's the, the goal is to transform that energy into something that is constructive. So an infusion of fresh energy that's transforming a situation. So yes, I feel all of those things today. Uh, internally, I have a lot of energy being that's kind of drawn in, and I'm kind of putting that out there in different ways and using it in different ways. Um, and so this, to me, speaks a lot to... Um, I do like the idea of drawing the energy in because I do think of pushing outwards um, with the palm, but he's being very receptive, right? That's a very receptive hand, especially for a knight. Um, so, so that's why I like to then, especially in a deck like this, that isn't just going to have traditional right away Smith images or decks like the Heindel or these kinds of one, even the Terror of the Hidden Realms. I'm just using those because I know people are using them. Um, they sometimes go on, they very often go off on their own. And so if it, one of the ways to getting to know the deck, if you really want, and some people don't want to, they just want to go off on their own and that's great. But if you're trying to connect with the energy of the deck uh, with the creator, you know, start from your own place and then see. And then I might go back and forth as to whether absorbing or uh, releasing, depending on the question, depending on the situation, depending on what my intuition says. Uh, but this, both ways, this works really well for me. Now, I love, how, how perfect is this? Because what, yeah, I always lean forward like I'm, we're having this conversation. I'm looking straight into the camera and I'm talking to you, but it's down here on the cards. I just talked about how this card, this deck to me is about diving into the waters of the high priestess and look what card zinged to come out and it was the high priestess. That's synchronicity. That's the power of a deck that is really connect, you're connecting with. And I just absolutely love that she showed up here and it's in the position of, um, Interestingly, it's in the position of without uh, because I'm so here I'm absorbing energy, right? I'm taking an energy, I'm taking an energy, I'm taking an energy, and then going without 
into the external force as the, is the energy of the high priestess, which you think of as a very internal energy. So I really love that because she's about gathering knowledge and things, right? But it's not for the sake of knowledge itself. Well, some people actually do say that about the high priestess, but I don't think we generally ever have knowledge for the sake of knowledge itself. And it's certainly for me, uh, when I take in knowledge, it is because I want to take that and then give it back out. I don't, I, that's, I enjoy to give knowledge out. That's something I enjoy doing. It's part of my natural makeup. Um, and so uh, for me, this is about, okay, if I'm going to dive in deep, um, what I'm bringing back up out of the waters is going to influence my external life. And again, this is one of those situations where I don't, to be quite honest, do too much with in three cards with really strong positions go with the flow if you, if you're if you're looking at your reading and you're saying within without advice it's not really working but it's telling me something else listen to the cards like just go with the cards and don't worry about making it fit into positions if that doesn't feel like what the message is because some decks are going to be or some readings are just going to be like no I don't want to talk about that this is what I have to say um, and so you know that's something that you can just kind of follow along with and allow to happen but well, let's look at these are the keywords for her about mysteries, internal knowledge, looking within for answers. Same, you know, that's the idea of creating a contrast or a polarity. Um, so the I, but for me, because of this position of going without with it, uh, without with it, <laughs> is that idea. Okay, if I'm going to dive into the waters of the high priestess, it's because I do want to come back up. Uh, much like the hermit goes off, but then is paving a way. I still feel the, with this card in this position, that's the message that I'm getting with that, which makes sense to me. Um, and then the last one is sort of advice on how to kind of move forward with this energy. And I'm not seeing this about like my shopping list or you know, needing to clean the house or this, that, or other thing. Like this is, you know, talking about internal things that are going on. So I'm absorbing a lot of power and energy. I'm diving deep so that I can take that knowledge and share that knowledge that I get out of the waters. And then we have the cups. So it's like, okay, what am I what am I going to do with this? What is the advice of how I'm going to take all of this together and um, do something with it? And we have the three of cups. Uh, so here's my uh, my symbol. So we have three um, here we have the astrological sign or not astro the symbol excuse me, for um, water. So this is the Three of Cups, and I love this because we have this coming from the single source. And you can actually even just think about the uh, source being from the High Priestess, uh, coming through this through from the waters of the high priestess and splitting off. So what that, that single uh, event of diving in and coming up is going to branch out and I'm going to be able to go off and, because your three of cups is generally you'll see three women together. Um, you have that sense of unity with people. Um, this deck I know is a little bit different, but just going off of that alone, I can visually see taking in of power, diving deep to bring it out, and then having it split off and go off to to various other people and, and connect with other people with it. That's how I would particularly read this spread. But again, let's take a look at the Three of Cups. It talks about everything sharing the same source, cups overflowing, good fortune, happiness, all kinds of things. But it's, it's taking from one source and splitting off um, out into the rest of the world that I'm trying to bring this knowledge up in the first place for. Um, and it's going to split off and it's going to grow and, and, and it's going to help the rest of the world grow. So this visually, I think, is an absolutely amazing uh, set of cards. And this is why I love the Mary L so much. Uh, this is a deck that I would not, uh, just after what, it's been a week now, or it will be a week tomorrow, I would not be without this deck. Um, I wouldn't be without this deck. And it will probably be the first deck that I buy a backup deck for. Uh, so very powerful. And I've used it in readings with clients. It reads beautifully with clients, uh, which I didn't actually know whether it would or not, but it, it reads beautifully with clients. I've used it with some grief readings. Um, 
I don't think I would pull it out for, for something that was too, too practical. I think that might be a waste of, of its energies, but that may, may actually work just fine as an all-around deck. I have not tried it. I've, all the readings that I've done with this have been past life readings, uh, grief readings, um, some, you know, healing kinds of readings, um, as well as in the past life ones. So um, there we have it. I hope that that helps a little bit to kind of see what I would would do with this um, particular spread that we're moving into. But again, the key points to remember are to stay flexible. This is supposed to be fun. If it becomes stressful, just don't do it for a couple days. Come back and do it whenever you want. I'm not great at doing every challenges every single day. I'm going to try to because this is something I'm involved in. But if I miss a day, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. The world goes on and you'll, you'll pick up the next day. Um, if, if, if you're positions are bothering you, change the positions to what you want. Truthfully, I'll probably pretty much be doing just three cards, you know, and kind of letting it flow as it flows. Uh, oftentimes when I do a three card, the central card becomes key and then there's more information here. Or you can do that linear thing that we saw going on here with the drawing in of energy, the diving in and getting knowledge to bring it up to other people, and then that splitting off because you can just visually see that here. So, you know, be flexible when looking at the cards. If they have something to say that doesn't fit what you want it to say, you know, just let go of your preconceived structures and go with what the cards um, have to tell you. Um, and so that... Um, and then have fun. I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody's doing. Um, so the details are, just so I can you know, make sure I'm covering everything for everybody, this is being taken, this is taking place on Instagram. Um, when you uh, take, you know, when you do your reading, you can take a picture of it on Instagram and post it. Um, hashtag within without advice. Uh, that's the hashtag that didn't have anything attached to it, you know, so that it would just be that. I mean, try to remember to hashtag because it allows everybody to be able to see what's going on. Um, because a lot of times we don't, you know, I don't necessarily know. Everybody has different names on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and so you know, if you hashtag it with the with Within without with advice, uh, it makes it very easy to click that hashtag and see so we can comment on things and things such as that. So hashtag with that. I would love to be tagged. Tag at the truth and story or tag Patrick J. Fogarty um, that um, which I'll put in the description box below. So again, so that we don't miss them so we can make sure to see them and comment on them. Um, and so this is and again and then just and have fun uh, and, and learn. Like this is about learning. Like this is a diving deep so it's probably not a lot about going to be a lot of giggling kind of fun but to me this is kind of fun and this is about digging deep and doing it together so that we can work through things together so if it becomes stressful walk away <laughs> it's not worth it nobody is going to point fingers at you and say you didn't do it today if they do I will personally have words with them <laughs> and I don't have words with very many people other than my children so I hope that helps. If you have any questions whatsoever, um, and you can go ahead and put those in the comments below, and I will make sure to keep an eye on those uh, to um, touch bases with you. All right, have a wonderful night.